Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back to Civil Engineers YouTube channel. Today in this short video lecture, I will guide you specially for lapping length in beam, column, slab, etc. Especially in steel structure design, that what should be the lapping length formula for beam, column and slab from the reference of IS 456-2000. Let's get started. If this video is helpful for you, so you may like this video. The topic is lapping for beam, column and slab. So the first one is lapping for column. So what is the formula to take lapping length for column? As I told you, the reference is IS Indian Standard Codes 456-2000. Okay, you can find the reference in this reference. Okay, these things. So, for compression, because the, uh, the column is compression member, so therefore, you can see guys, this is a column. Okay, here we will provide the lapping like this. Okay, so this is lapping length. So how we can get this length? This one. Okay, so the formula is for lapping length which is 45D. Remember guys, where D is die of steel rod. For example, if the die of steel rod is 12 mm. So now the formula will be, so 45 multiply 12. Then you will get the value of lapping length in mm. Okay, anything. So that should be lapping length. But for beam, column and slab, the lapping length should not be less than in IS 456-2000, okay? So, lapping length should not be less than 75 millimeter. Okay, it should not be less than 75 millimeter. But if you want to provide the lapping length, so the length should be with 45D4 column. Now guys, where is the place to provide lapping length? This is very important because many people, they don't know. So if, uh, if you need to provide lapping length, so in any place they are able to provide, but this is wrong. So what is the proper method to provide lapping length? Remember guys here, the lapping length should be provided, for example, this is the height of column. This is height. For example, height of the column is 12 feet, for example. So the height should be divided by 4. Okay, for example, if I divide height by 4, for example, 12 divided by 4, so it becomes 3 feet. Okay. So after three feet, okay, after three feet, you are able to provide lapping length. But the lapping length should also not be provided at the bottom and also at the top. But also, mid is not the place to provide lapping length. So after three feet, as I told you before, h divided by four, height divided by four, then you will get the length three feet. So after three feet, you are able to provide the lapping length with the formula of 45D. So this is the place to provide lapping length. Now guys, the lapping length, for example, if we provide one lapping length for longitudinal bar at this position, so the other will be not, uh, so it should be alternately, not at the same point. So if you provide lapping length at the same point, point so that is the place to make collapse. So it will make the, uh, the column uh, collapse. Okay, so therefore, this is very important. 
especially for lapping length okay so it should be provided alternately the other question is guys for lapping length okay so if you provide the lapping length at the end okay for example here we have a slab okay also at the bottom we have the other floor okay so don't provide at the bottom and also at the top okay because bending moment are maximum at the top and also at the bottom so therefore l by 4 is the best place to provide lapping length now come to uh, beam okay so this is the first one the second one is beam so lapping length for beam okay lapping for beam remember guys in beam we have two portions let me show you it in long section so the top portion for lapping so this is compression zone and the bottom is tensile zone or tension zone okay so what should be the lapping length formula for compression zone and for tensile because we are not able to use one formula for lapping length especially for these two because as you know concrete is weak in tension but it's strong in compression so in the compression zone the lapping length should be less than tensile portion okay so therefore lapping length for compression for compression zone the lapping length should be 24d okay so here for the tensile tensile zone or tension zone you can say okay so here we should provide the lapping with the formula of 50d as i told you before d mean die of steel rod for example if the diameter of the steel rod is 16 mm or 20 mm or 24 mm anything okay so the d should be die of steel rod in millimeter okay so now guys remember now where is the best place in long section of the beam for example for compression so for the compression zone the lapping should be provided at the mid okay but here in tension zone it should not be provided at the mid okay as i told you before that concrete is weak not strong in uh, tension zone okay so therefore this is the place which i am showing you in the figure guys you can see these are supports okay for example this is continuous beam okay so these are supports so here try to provide lapping length and tension zone at the joint okay so this is the joint so provide here like this at the bottom okay but at the top portion for example we have this is the section for the beam right two at the top and four steel rods at the bottom as i told you before that uh, concrete is weak in tension so therefore in tension we will more uh, we will use more amount of steel or we can use maximum uh, steel rods compared to its top portion in compression zone so therefore the lapping length should be provided at the junction between beam and column as you can see this is beam and these are these two are columns so therefore it should be provided at the junctions also at this place okay you can provide the lapping length but at the top okay provide the lapping length at the mid at this position you can provide the lapping length so the formula for the compression zone should be 24d and for the compression it should be 50d but never forget it one thing guys as you can see this is the length of beam this is the span for example the span is 16 meter for example the span is six uh, sorry six meter okay so if the span is six meter so don't provide the lapping length with the distance of l by four so let me discuss 
uh, in detail. So when you do it by L, L by 4, so 16 by 4, sorry, 6 by 4. So here we have 1.5 meter. So here from this place, from the start to end, so this is span, clear span, length of the beam. So therefore, to the distance of L by 4, which is here from the calculation, 1.5 meter from this side and 1.5 si uh, meter from this side. So don't provide the lapping length at these positions, okay, L by 4 distance. Because we have maximum shear stresses at the end of the supports. If you provide cracks, uh, so a, actually shear stresses can provide maximum uh, cracks at the end of the support. So therefore we provide crank off bar or bent up bar. Because at this position L by 4 distance we have maximum shear stresses. So there we have negative bending moment as I told you in many videos before. So therefore at the mid we have positive bending moment. So let me uh, draw a section for example. You can see this is a beam. This is beam and these two are columns. Okay. So when the load comes on the top of the beam, so the beam will make a shape same like this. Look here. So here we have positive bending moment and here we have negative bending moment. To resist shear stresses, we will provide stirrups closely compared to its mid. Mid spacing, uh, stirrup spacing should be maximum compared to L by 4 distance because we have negative bending moment. So therefore to resist negative bending moment, the stirrups should be provided closely. At the mid we have uh, bending, uh, actually we don't have shear stresses, zero shear stresses or minimum shear stresses. So therefore we don't need to provide closely the spacing of stirrups okay so this is very important for you to know about this so to resist uh, negative uh, bend, uh, negative bending moment okay our shear stresses are maximum so here we provide bent up bar so what is bent up bar guys you can see the steel are bent at this place also here like this guys you can see clearly to resist negative bending moment we should provide bent up bar or crank bar okay with the distance of L by 4 as I told you here. So this is very important. So now what is the formula? 24D for compression for tensile zone 50D. Where is the place? At the top try to provide lapping length at the mid but try to provide lapping length at the junctions. Don't provide L with L by 4 distance otherwise you will face more problems in steel structure design and the beam column or uh, this structure will provide a lot of cracks so therefore uh, remember these things which I've discussed. So now lapping for slab okay so lapping for slab is the last one is sorry for this lapping for slab so the formula is 60D. Again, where D is die of steel rod. Okay, so in slab, where is the place to provide lapping length? Okay, so the lapping length should be provided in the slab where we have negative, uh, if we don't have bending moment and minimum shear stresses so that is called point of contra flexure so that is the place where i have discussed in many videos what is uh, point of uh, contra flexure and you can search also in the google to know uh, where is the place uh, for point of contra flexure okay then you are able to know where is the place so this is very important for you so we are not able to provide at the mid also at the end of the support so for that we will uh, solve the equation especially for the uh, slab then uh, you will uh, find out the point in which you can uh, uh, keep the lapping length for the slab so guys uh, this is the topic especially for lapping length beam column and slab so if, if you remember these things so uh, you will not make any problem 
uh, on construction site specially and state structure design hope this video can help you thanks for watching see you in next video goodbye